to watch? Oh, well, I'm kind of nervous. I'm new to chess. I haven't played chess much, and this is my first time being in a tournament, and I'm, uh, I'm kind of nervous, and I'm, I'm wondering what's going to happen. But, you know, God gave me a good, strong brain, a smart brain, and I've been studying the strategies that go into chess. And there's a lot of strategies. It's a really cool game. It's very complex. And you know, as I've been studying the Bible, it reminds me a lot of the Bible because there's so many strategies. God used so many strategies in the Bible, just like there's strategies in a game of chess. And you gotta get all your pieces in place to make your moves, and God put all his pieces in place to make his moves. And you know, let me tell you a cool story about that. But before we do, I always think of those big questions. There's all these big questions that we have. And the big question that I've really been pondering is, how can we glorify God? How can we glorify God? And glorify means to bring glory to his name, to praise him, to show people how awesome he is, and show God how awesome we think he is. How can we glorify God? So while, we tell that, while I tell you this story about these cool strategies, think of that question, how can you glorify God? Now, what have we learned so far? We learned that God created the world and sin broke it. And then God picked a family and he promised them, I'm going to bless the world through you. You'll have many people. I'm going to give you a land to live in. He's going to bless the world. He made this covenant. And then his people, his chosen people, were enslaved in Egypt. And then he brought them out of Egypt but they chose not to trust God and they got a 40 year time out wandering in the wilderness. And then their leader, Moses, it was his time to die. He was done. He got to go and be with God. He was done leading them. He got to go and be with God. And now it's Joshua's turn to step up and lead. And it's time to go into the promised land. There's one big obstacle though. There's the Jordan River. They have to cross the Jordan River. And it said that at the time God said, hey, it's time to go into the promised land, the Jordan River was in flood stage. So it was, it was a good sized river to begin with, but it had flooded so it was even bigger and deeper and the waters were moving fast and it was dangerous. And they're like, oh no, what are we gonna do? How are we gonna get past this flooded river? But God had a strategy, just like our chess game. He had a strategy all in place. And he said, take the Ark of the Covenant. Remember, the Ark of the Covenant was a special gold box that sat in the most holy place in the temple. And it had some special things inside of it. And it was, it was God's, kind of like God's little throne in there. And he said, take the Ark of the Covenant and get 12 men to carry it. And they had priests there and they were gonna carry it. And everybody was waiting. And God said, as soon as they step in the river, I will dry it up. And the Bible said that God caused it to build up in a heap, to go in a heap. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And so they're, they're, they're getting ready to go. And so the, the guys carrying the ark, they've got it. And they're heading into the river. And sure enough, as soon as their toes touched the river, it dried up. And they crossed on dry land. Does this sound like some other time? that God dried up the water and they crossed on dry land? Yeah, when they were leaving Egypt. So, the priests go out and they stand in the middle of the river and all the people get to go across and they get to the other side and then Joshua has 12 men, from one from each tribe, go and get stones from in the river where the priests are standing and they get stones and they bring those stones out of the river to where the people had camped and they set up an altar to remember what God had done for them. It was a memorial, it was a way to remember how God had provided for them. And then, once everybody was out, the priests carrying the ark, they came out of the river and as soon as they came out, the water came back down. Now, I said I'd talk about in a heap. So God had a strategy and it says that the water was in a heap upriver, and it names a town where it's near, up the river. And theologians, which are very, very smart people who study the Bible, they wonder, 
Was it miraculous and God just kind of put his hand there and the water built up? Kind of like in this picture, it just built up in a heap. Or did God cause like a landslide and some rocks and dirt and debris fell into the river and created a temporary dam holding back the water? But if he did that, we don't know which way he did it. It's pretty cool either way because his timing was perfect. It was up river. It was up where they couldn't see it. And he, he had them heading towards the river and he knew the exact moment to stop the water so that by the time they got to it, it would be dry. And he knew the exact moment to let the water go again so that as soon as they stepped out of the river, the water came back. He knew, he had a plan, he had a strategy in place to guide them across that river and to head into the promised land, the land that he had promised them, the land that he had given to them to live in. Now, every Bible story connects to Jesus. So what does this have to do with Jesus? Well, God showed his power by stopping the river, his timing by making it just right, and it shows that he had a plan. It was just the right timing so that everything worked out because he knew what the timing was. And when Jesus came to earth, God didn't just pick any random time. He picked the perfect time. And there were some reasons he picked that time. One, the Romans who were in charge, who had conquered Israel, God's people, and most the rest of the known world at the time, almost all of Europe and Northern Africa and the Middle East, they had conquered it all. And they had built roads everywhere. And one of the main central places that most of the roads went through was Israel, the promised land. And because of the Romans, almost everybody spoke Greek. And so there was a common language. There was a bit of peace. It was a peaceful time. There wasn't a lot of war going on. There were still wars and strifes and stuff going on when Jesus came. But it was a more peaceful time. There was roads so you could travel easily. And there was a common language so that when Jesus died on the cross for our sins, this is all part of God's plan, his disciples could easily travel on the roads. There wasn't a lot of war so they could get places easily. And they could communicate with the people in those places and they could share the gospel of Jesus' death on the cross. God had a plan and he worked it all out to the perfect time. And he gave his people the perfect land, which was right at this crossroads, this important train route to spread his gospel because God had a plan, he had a strategy. Wow, he is a big, awesome God. That leaves us with our question, how can we glorify God? We can glorify God by loving him and obeying him. Now, Israel had a hard time obeying him. He said, hey, go take the promised land. And they said, oh, we're scared. And he said, oh, you get a time out. 40 years wandering in the wilderness. And he said, worship only me. And they said, hey, we want to worship this gold cow. And he said, oh, bummer, you get a consequence. They had a hard time obeying him and worshiping him. But this time they were able to obey and worship him. And do you remember those rocks that they took out of the river? They took the rocks out of the river and they made an altar, which was a way of worshiping God so that they would remember. And so that years later, their kids or their grandkids would say, hey, what's that pile of rocks? What's, what's that pile of rocks mean? And they would say, hey, let me tell you the story of how God stopped the river so that we could cross. It was for them to remember so that they could tell our kids and their kids, kids, and their kids, 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 kids about it. And we also have the Bible, and that's how we get to tell you about it, so we can glorify God. We obey him and we love him, and we remember the things he's done. Well, it's almost my turn for my first game of chess. I'm feeling kind of nervous, but I'm going to take a couple deep breaths, and I think it'll go really well, and I'm excited. But I'll see you guys after. Bye!